introduction to this uh, webinar. This is um, the fourth in a series of events that we've held over the last 10 days. Um, uh, the first in Aberystwyth, the week last Friday. Join the conference. We had a session in Llan Roost on Monday and in Swansea last Tuesday. So um, I'm hoping that um, you're all new attendees so that you don't have to re-listen to a lot of what was, um, was uh, presented um, at those events. Um, and this event really, because it's a webinar rather than a face-to-face -face meeting, is basically going to give you an introduction to um, the open call that we've got at the moment running um, and um, Helga will then take you through um, the process and we'll have Hayley McDonald-Jones who will give us a presentation on the financial aspects. Um, there'll be a session at the end for Q&A. Um, if you're on Skype, you're very welcome to type up your questions or observations as we proceed. If you're not, we will have an open Q&A session for those of you who are on your phones at the end. As Helga's already mentioned, um, there is a bit of feedback um, that we experienced in the last 10 minutes. So if we can go on mute when we're not speaking, then that would be really helpful, I think. Um, I'd like to also mention that this um, is being recorded so that um, it can also go on uh, the web page um, as additional information so that we can be transparent with everyone. Those who have missed this session today can still access it on the web page. So if we move to the opening slide then, um, which is just to give you the policy context, really. Um, as you can see, the first slide on, on the presentation is purely to say that the open call for sustainable management of natural resources project funding is now open. So the introduction and policy context falls to me. The Environment Act and Wellbeing Future Generations Act form part of a radical new legislative and policy framework in Wales, which we're all probably aware of. Has joined this, the conference. This challenges us to think differently about how we work and needs us to work together to make long-term changes. The SMNR funding open call has, joined the conference. has been developed in the con Roberts. context has joined of the, the new legislation and the policies and processes that flow from it. The Environment Act, in particular, required Natural Resources Wales to produce the State of Natural Resources Report, SONA report. Ali Partridge has joined the conference. And in due course, following Welsh Government's production of the NRP, the Natural Resources Policy, NRW, by the end of December 2019, has a duty to produce area statements. The take-home messages of SONAR, which we've already got, um, is that natural resources are really important to Wales socially, culturally, economically, as well as for their own sake. They can be used, but they are not resilient to current rates of use. Something needs to change. The, nat the natural resources policy took this, assessed what are the things which need to happen. Also on that list are wellbeing assessments that have come out of the Wellbeing Future Generations Act, um, NRW's own wellbeing objectives and statement, and then there's the Wales National Marine Plan, which is about to go out to consultation, and then there's the planning consultation on the National Development Framework. I suppose at this juncture it's worth mentioning that we have been working with Welsh Government and I'm hoping that Richard Whitehead is on the call um, because the Rural Development Programme is also a, one of those kind of policy contexts um, and the Sustainable Management Scheme which is currently running um, is also quite important um, in this 
when we look at all of this. So we need to ensure that we are collectively delivering objectives that tackle climate change and the reverse and also reverse the decline in biodiversity, build more resilient the conference. in Wales, and optimise the benefits of well-being offered by a more accessible and resilient natural environment. In doing this, we can contribute to Wales' government's four headline opportunities associated with our natural resources. And these are the four that you can see on the slide. So, for those who can't see the slide, it's supporting successful, sustainable communities, promoting green growth and innovation to create sustainable jobs, supporting a more resource efficient economy, and maintaining healthy, active, and connected communities. So, this, this policy backdrop has led us to identify the need for a new approach. And one of our aims is to use our funding as an opportunity to capture knowledge of ways in which we can manage natural resources that both build resilience of ecosystems and optimize the flow of benefits to people. To do this, we acknowledge we need to work with a wider range of stakeholders who might think differently about natural resources than we do, who might be able to better spot the opportunities and may be able to design new approaches to ensure multiple benefits are achieved. So some of the key differences to previous NRW funding rounds are noted as follows. So we're now putting the focus on place-based working. And to do this, we've actually reorganized our operations um, activities um, with heads of place across Wales. So we've got head of South West, head of South Central, head of South East, head of Mid Wales, head of South of North West Wales, head of North East Wales. We also recognise that communities are often best placed to shape and understanding lo understand local priorities and opportunities. So we're keen to do that. We've also identified key challenges rather than solutions and the crucial word here is challenges we're not providing solutions and telling you what to deliver what to deliver we are actually asking you to think about both the root causes of a problem and how they could be tackled at source or elsewhere so we might need to think about the functioning of wider ecosystems catchment, landscape or regional scale, or it might even be developing new tools of working. We also want to reduce the administrative burden. We've listened to our stakeholders and we've tried to reduce the administrative burden of past rounds and to promote a more collaborative approach. So we've introduced a two-phased process, a light touch expression of interest for applicants to share their initial ideas with us and then a number of these will be invited to develop a full application for funding. Obviously we now have a very clear duty around sustainable management of natural resources and we'd like to see our commitment also reflected in some of the applications that come forward in all of the applications that come forward and then we're keen to work iteratively and build successful collaboration. In addition, we, moving on then, we're now, as I've already mentioned, we're, we're looking at um, six um, area statements on land that will align with the heads of place that I've just um, just rehearsed, but there is also the marine area statement. So those are the area statements, and we're also hoping that the challenges that we'll have will align with, with those areas, but more of that to come. Moving on then to 
highlight there are four top level challenges. The first one is to ensure land and water is managed sustainably in an integrated way and reduce the risk of flooding from environmental hazards such as flooding. The four top level challenges have been adapted for each area, including the, including the marine environment. In addition, there are solutions which could be best provided at a strategic level. So the first one is to do with the, the risk from flooding. The second is to do with improving the resilience and quality of our ecosystems through improved habitat management, biodiversity and connectivity. The third top level challenge is to help people to live healthier and more fulfilled lives through improved access to the outdoors for health and well-being. And the fourth top level challenge is to promote the sustainable use of natural resources to support the economy and develop skills and learning. So not only have those four headline key challenges been developed um, for each of the areas, there is also um, a Wales-wide um, set of, of, of actions, potentially. Um, so we're looking for all Wales projects to have more than local significance, to have Wales-wide impact, to help resolve the top-level challenges across Wales as identified in SONA. And I can't emphasise enough how important SONA is as the key evidence to draw on. All Wales and strategic pro proposals for any of the challenges should also establish or improve evidence, establish or improve tools and methods of understanding, improve understanding and or influence positive behavioural changes, and build on existing or develop new ways of working. There are four kind of key themes for the All Wales projects. The first is around land and water use. The second is ecosystems and biodiversity. The third is access and recreation. And the fourth is supporting communities, innovation and learning. Now, the area statement challenges differ from those of the All Wales and strategic challenges and they deal with local and regional issues and are locally or regionally driven. There are no details in this presentation about the individual challenges but they can be found in Appendices 2 to 8 in the Guidance Note. Appendix 1 is the All Wales Challenges. It's worth noting that all the necessary information is on the website, including contact details for each of the area statement areas. The next presentation about process will give you the individual contact names for each area statement area, if you'd like to share your ideas for collaboration more widely through the NRW website, there is a collaboration ideas form on the NRW webpage under About Us and Funding. So if you'll fill out this form and return it to funding application at cumbrie.gov.uk by the 12th of December, we can then compile the collaborative ideas and share them on the same website by the 15th of December. The Welsh Government has joined the conference. So please keep returning to that web page. The frequently asked questions will also be posted there, together with the presentations from today and from the stakeholder events held at the end of November, and they'll be on there by the end of this week. So I'm now going to ask Helga Dixon to take us through the process presentation. Helga, over to you. Right. Hello, uh, I hope you can all hear me. 
This is Helga Dixon speaking. Sorry. Technical hitch here. Right. Um, okay, I'm just going to gallop through the process um, about um, around the expression of interest. Has form. joined the conference. <clears throat> now, um, I have to say that the both the application form and the guidance are on the website. So if you go to the NRW website and look under funding, you will find the application form and the guidance there. Okay, so these this is the headline figures, and there is this fund is approximately uh, three million, and um, we are um, this open call is for projects up to eighteen months invited to address the challenges. The reason it's for 18 months is because we wanted to, um, once the area statements, which are due to be published in December 19, um, we wanted then to do a new open call so that um, we can use the grant to address the challenges identified in the area statements. The intervention rate is 50%. Um, which means that NRW will be pay up to 50% of a grant. The other remaining 50% should come from the partners. Um, it's a two-stage process with an expression of interest and then a full application. And um, also in this, um, we're trialling something new, that this is not just to invite requests for um, funding, but also for support from NRW other than funding, such as access to NRW managed land and data. And um, as Rianne mentioned earlier, there are seven area statement areas and uh, they're, so they're projects which can be related, tied to an area statement or they're projects which can be for um, strategic or all Wales projects. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, so the call of expression, uh, calls for expressions of interest has already opened, and um, it is a short time a deadline, but it is also a very simple form. Um, the these expressions of interest have to be submitted by the 14th of January. Um, they will then be assessed by um, NRW panels, and the results you will be notified of the results by the 15th of February. Um, if your expression of interest is rejected, we will provide feedback. Um, and if your ex expression of interest is selected, you will be invited to make a full application. Okay, now I'm going through the form. This will be, of course, be difficult with those of you who've connected by telephone. Um, so I'll just tell you what the headlines are. I can't really explain the layout, um, but I hope it's fairly self-explanatory. Oops. Um, so, the form is available on the NRW website and I would urge you to read the guidance because the guidance is quite comprehensive and also um, you will see at the back of the guidance all the individual area statement challenges for each area statement area plus the all Wales um, challenges and those are the ones we're expecting you to address. As I mentioned earlier, the deadline is Monday, uh, sorry, midnight on Sunday, the 14th of January. You may submit in either Welsh or English. There is a maximum word count on boxes, and this is actually what's going to be probably one of the most challenging thing to condense what um, what you're saying in, in 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 concisely and precisely and clearly because we the only supplementary information we're relying are maps at this stage, so we're not. Um, so you can't bulk everything else up with lots of appendices. So you have to say what you want to achieve on the form. OK, the first slide uh, is pretty, pretty simple. It's the project name and um, a project summary, which is uh, only 250 words. And then you have to say which of the top level challenges you wish to your project will address. And they're listed there and you tick a box. Now. Um, we always get asked, if we tick more boxes, do we have a better chance? Just tick the box that is most relevant to the project you're doing. If you tick all four boxes, you get no advantage 
or, or if, and if you take only one box, you don't get disadvantage. It's better to just tick the box that your project fits in best to. Um, the next question, question three, is the support requested from NRW. So there's the options of funding, access to NRW managed land, access to data, or any other non-funded uh, resource. And then it asks you to give more details. That's specifically, if you're giving asking for funding, that will come later. But if you want um, any other NRW non-funded resource, just list it there. Right. Um, question four is then the applicant's details, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and question five is the project location. So um, it's at this point that you would um, put the, um, the area or the postcode or the grid reference. But we would also ask you if your project straddles several area statement areas to list the um, area statements it covers. So if you're, uh, um, and you will see from, from the guidance what the area statement areas are. It then asks for the time scale, so when your project would start and when it would finish. And then there is a very simple um, question on financial details. So all it's asking is total project cost, total grant requested from NRW, and the match funding. Uh, now, Haley is going to speak at length about the finance um, after me. But I, just to say, although it's only a very simple table, it is important that you've thought about how much you're going to need. Because when you get to full application stage, you won't be able to increase the amount of money you're asking for. So this this figure that you put in here will be, if you're successful, what your full application is going to be budgeted at. So that's why it's quite important to have a fairly clear idea how much you're looking for, even at this stage. Um, now, question um, eight is about um, meeting the challenges. And there is a sort of um, a logic table there, which asks you to list the challenge, the input, the output, the outcomes, and the impact. And um, then there's also um, a text box where you can um, elaborate on this. Now, this there is in the guidance there is an example of um, a logic. Um, a logic model, a general logic model, to give you an idea exactly what we're looking for. So um, in the, um, this one asks you what challenge you're addressing, um, what resources you've been needing, what your outputs are, your deliverables, what your short and medium term changes you anticipate seeing in one to five years, and what change will your outputs cr um, contribute in longer term. So, for example, the example that is given in the um, in the guidance is um, the challenge um, to get more people to walk to work in Wales. And so the input would be um, the development of activity commuting packs, um, outreach to recruit employers, and then monitoring behaviour of change. The outputs will be the number of commuting packs produced and the number of employers recruited. The outcomes would be increased knowledge of safe walking routes, reduced number of length of car or length of car trips, increased active commuting. Uh, and the impact, long-term impact, would be reduced mortality from chronic heart disease, improved mental health, reduced pollution. So this is just an example um, laid out so you know how you follow the steps. Um, now, the next one is, sorry, that's, all right, I got that there. Right, question nine. Um, it, this is, uh, this is part, this is one of the most important questions. This is embedding sustainable management of natural resources principles into your project. And you have to demonstrate how your project has considered the SMNR principles and what difference this has made. Now, um, the principles... 
uh, just to run them past you. They are listed in the guidance, but just to remind you, these are adaptive management, appropriate scale, collaboration and engagement, public participation, evidence, multiple benefits, long-term projects, preventative action, and building resilience. Um, NRW does also have um, an introducing um, SMNR booklet on the NRW website, so you might use that to help you. Um, number, question number 10 is support for the project. Um, and um, you, this is here you would address, um, as it says, you know, any consultation or research or evidence that you have that there's need for your project. You may also mention if you've had any engagement with NRW about it um, and also any collaboration with any other organisations on building up this project. Um, question number 11 is applicant experience. Um, so, um, so you can say what experience you have in running projects of this kind. If you are a new organisation, um, I mean, you won't be able to demonstrate this, but we would then expect you just to highlight the processes and governance that you will have in place to manage the project. So um, just because you haven't had previous experience doesn't exclude you from applying. Um, it would also be good at this point to outline what will happen at the end of the project, because do bear in mind that um, there is a, a maintenance obligation for infrastructure, um, and there will, of course, be um, on the applicant, and there will, of course, be post-project monitoring. Uh, and number 12, we would just ask you um, the next steps that you would need to develop your project idea to a full application. So there, in this point, you have to remember um, permissions that you would require, uh, consents that you require, um, finding the other, uh, finding the match funding, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then there is um, a declaration by the applicant and also um, a conflict of interest form we would ask you to sign. And then your um, electronic signature. And we would um, expect these applications to be um, submitted to us to the funding application at kvoithnaterialkumri.gov.uk. So the email address that's on the application. Um, Okay. Right, one thing uh, I'm now, the final thing to go through is uh, the scoring criteria. Now, I do realise that those of you again on the phone, it's going to be difficult for you, um, but I'll hopefully it'll be a bit, um, I'll try and make it as clear as possible. And as I said, this is also in the guidance document. So, um, the things that are not scored um, the project name, of course, the project summary isn't scored, the applicant's details, the project location, the time scale, the financial inter intervention rate, um, or other support. All this is for information only at this stage. Um, the things that, that are scored, the first one is meeting the challenges. Now, the, the marks you can get is between one and five, one to five, one being the worst, five being the best. And the weighting is three, so the uh, the range would be multiple. The end, the selected score would be multiplied by three. Um, embedding of sustainable management of natural resource principles. That is also the range is between one to five, and again the weighting is three. So those two are the most important questions that you have to answer well. Uh, Number three is supporting for, support for the proposal. Again, the range is from one to five, and the weighting is two. Applicant experience is scored. The range is one to five, but the weighting is one. And finally, next steps, the range, the scoring range is from one to five, and the weighting is two. Um, the next diagram we have here is just the development of the full application. Um, it is, again, I'm afraid, because it's only an 18-month project, we decided we weren't going to make a really long, heavy application, but it also means the time frame is quite tight. Um, it would be from the 16th of February to the 15th of April. 
on the, the deadline is then 16th of April for submitting the full application. It would then be assessed by uh, an NRW panels and a moderation panel. And if you're not successful, you would get um, feedback on the full application. And if you are successful, you would receive a formal offers um, subject to all your documentation being complete. And if you haven't got all your ducks in a row quite yet, you would receive the offer, but you wouldn't be able to commence the project until you had all your permissions and match funding in place. Okay, um, for the full application, the additional information that would be needed would be the full financial breakdown, so the confirmation of match funding, in-kind contribution, cash flow forecast, etc. Your permissions, licenses and consents that have been granted where, where they're required and then compliance with, regu with regulatory and NRW policy requirements, including but not limited to equality and diversity, environmental policy, data protection and health and safety. Okay. Right, uh, this is the final slide from me. If you have general um, queries and um, they come to the funding application at kvoithnaterialcumri.gov.uk, that is also the same address where you submit your form. If you have finance queries, it goes to grants.enquiries at kvoithnaterialcumri.gov.uk. And then there is a table. This is, I think, at the um, this table will appear on the website and you can also see it um, under each area statement area the person you are supposed to contact. So for all Wales projects you contact funding application but for the marine you contact Catherine Hughes, for mid Wales you contact Linda Ashton, for North East Wales you contact Paul Mitchell, for North West Wales you contact Alan Price, for South Central Wales, you contact Mickey Miata Lee or Chris Heaps. For South East Wales, you contact Sarah Tyndall or Sarah Cocum. And for South West Wales, you contact Ella Davis or Glyn Jones. As I say, these contact details are under each area statement in the appendices of um, the guidance document on the website. Right, I'm going to stop now and I'm going to hand over to um, Hayley, who will now go through the finance bit. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I hope you can all hear me OK. Um, my name is Hayley MacDonald-Jones and I'm from the NRW finance team. Our role is to look after the financial governance and the due diligence of grant applications and agreements until the final payment of your grants. Um, hopefully, I can give you a few hints and tips today, which will help you with your EOIs and your full applications going forward. So, when should you consider your costs? Well, in the EOI, we are only asking for one line for your project costs as a total, but it's quite important to cost your project fully at an early stage, as if you get through to the full application stage, then your project costs cannot increase. So please make sure that you have fully costed your project. And also ensure that you have fully taken account of the guidelines before costing the project. And think about eligibility and procurement rules right at the very start. And just to touch on procurement rules, um, just be careful, you may be thinking about working with another partner, but to be a partner and to work collaboratively, then they must be contributing to the project. If on the other side, you are paying somebody for a service and they are charging you a cost for the work that they're doing, then you have to demonstrate transparency, value for money and no conflict of interest as you have to follow public procurement rules. Now in the FAQs, there will be more a full explanation of this with um, the public procurement thresholds where you have to, it's up to 5k, is only one quote is required, but above 5k, you need three written quotes, and then above 25,000, you will need to have a single tender exercise. But as I said, 
they will be more fully explained in the FAQs. Now, just to touch on um, the ineligible costs, this is more fully explained in the guidance, but just to touch on the most important bits. Um, the costs which have taken place before the agreed project start would be ineligible, so please bear that in mind. Don't start your project before your official project start because you won't be able to claim any of the costs back. Um, we can only fund additional costs, so costs which take place if the project does not exist, and we cannot fund more than 50%. Now, for those of you on the phone, um, when if you get through to the full application stage, there are um, seven budget headings. Um, these are personnel, travel and subsistence, external assistance, durable goods, consumables, other costs, and volunteer costs. Now, on the EOI, we are not asking you to split your cost into categories. However, it's worth splitting your cost into categories at an early stage, as it will make, as it will make things easier if you get to the full application stage. And remember that at the full application stage, your costs cannot increase. Yeah. Under personnel costs, you can build in costs for posts which will be directly involved in the project, but you must only include costs that would only occur as a direct result of project activity. And at the application stage, you will need to specify how many days each project, each person will spend on the project. And just a quick illustration of how you calculate staff costs. Um, eligible costs include basic salary plus pension, such, um, employer pension and, and employer NI statutory costs, the costs that you are obliged to meet as an employer. Non-statutory costs are not eligible. You are also able to allow for a plus in salary. Um, the total salary is then divided by the number of working days per year. These are working days, less bank holidays and annual holidays, and we use 220 days as a full-time equivalent. <clears throat> now, on overheads, you have two options. Um, the first option is full cost recovery, and this is where you can apportion those overheads which would increase if your project, could if your project took place. For example, if you think that your building running costs will increase as a result of the project, then you must may charge them to the project. However, we will need to see your methodology and your backing invoices to ensure that the costs have been apportioned fairly. Your other option is the 7% flat rate. This is where you may add on 7% flat rate of all costs, excluding durable costs and volunteer costs. And this does not have to be evidenced. Now, match funding, your contribution must be clean funds and no double funding. All parties are expected to make a contribution either in kind or cash contribution. And by cash, we mean unrestricted clean funds. If you use staff time as match, then you must be able to prove that the work would have taken place if the project did not exist, pr prove additionality. And if you're a lead partner, then 10% of your contribution to the total project costs must be unrestricted clean funds. And remember that match funding is audited. <clears throat> Now, claims evidence for volunteers, um, make sure that you, the, your volunteers complete timesheets, which are signed. And we do have um, the NRW volunteer rates. These are from April 2018. For unskilled admin work, so this is for any general work, it's £7.83 per hour. For supervisor technical skill is £12.50 per hour and this covers those in charge of staff and individuals with technical skills and qualifications, for example botanist, ecological sur surveyor, 
countryside manager, reserve warden, teacher, interpretation specialist, etc. The professional rate of £37.50 per hour is only applicable if the work or advice undertaken needs to stand up to legal scrutiny or challenge. Um, examples include solicitor, architect, surveyor and member of one of the chartered accountancy bodies. But remember that the volunteer rate applies to the work being done, not the skills of the person. So we can't pay £37.50 per hour, per hour for a solicitor cleaning a ditch. Um, mileage rates, um, cars and van are 45 pence a mile. Passengers, five pence a mile. Towing rates, 13.5 pence a mile. Motorcycles, 24 pence a mile. And bicycles, 20p a mile. Um, just to give you a quick overview of the claims, looking forward. Um, right at the start, ensure that you have the controls in place to ensure that invoices are not paid without proper checks. Ensure that your invoices and receipts are made out to your organisation. Keep your original voice invoices with the project filed sequentially and referenced in case of needed for audits. And remember that costs are only eligible if they have been incurred during the life of the project, relevant to the project application and must have been paid before you submitted the claim. And usually we ask, as evidence, we ask for a transaction list of actual spend and a summary of invoices. Just to touch on the headlines, um, if you're the lead partner, you must make a minimum 10% contribution and it can be, you've got cash contribution down there, but if you think of it as unrestricted clean funds, um, it's ensure that your costs are as accurate as possible going forward. Make sure that the total funding you're receiving from your other funders or um, your volunteer match funding and the amount you're receiving from MRW match the total cost of the project. And remember that funding cannot be offered retrospectively or paid in advance. And if you've got any queries, then I've got the email down there for the for the finance team, which is grant inquiries. Sorry, grants.inquiries at cavoicenatiliacumry.gov.uk. Thank you very much. Dear Hayley, thank you Hayley and thank you Helga uh, for taking us through both those um, presentations. The conference. I appreciate that it's a lot of information and I just will rehearse the fact that it will all be on the website for you to be able to access. Um, so I think Turning now to the session that we've put to one side for questions and answers, um, I know that we've had a few um, questions on the message board, um, which I've tried to deal with some of them, but obviously those of you on the phone will not have seen those. So I think, um, first of all, we'll deal with the ones on the message board and then I'll come to you on the phone for any questions so that we can try and answer. So, um, the first question was from Chris, I think, um, asking about um, whether project seek seeking funding must focus on one of the challenges identified in this guidance. Um, and I think that the, the straight answer to that is yes. Um, Helga, I think you you've already you know told the the sessions in in Aberystwyth and Llanroost and Swansea what the answer to this question is. It's best just to focus on one challenge for your project because trying to spread it across a number of challenges won't make won't bring you a higher score. Won't, won't make, mean that you score any higher. Sorry, so I'm sorry about that. Um, Helga, would you like to just rehearse that, please? Yeah. Um, and, and no, you're quite right, Rian. I mean, the thing is, challenges are quite broad, or as it is. So um, if we, I mean, you, if you really feel strongly that you cover two challenges, that's fine. But it doesn't give you any benefit, and it's probably better to focus on doing one challenge well. Um, so it's not prohibited, 
but um, we would recommend that you just stick with one challenge. Chris, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, Ruth, um, you had a question. Can match funding be another restricted grant applied for specifically to meet remaining costs of this project? Hayley, can you answer that question, please? And then there's a second part to that question. If staff seconded to project, can open competition be through internal recruitment only or must posts be externally advertised? Um, to answer the match um, funding question, I think it, you're saying the restricted grants, but then it's applied specifically to meet the remaining costs of this project. We would need to have confirmation from your um, other grant funder that they're happy for their funds to be used as match funding. And with the staff um, question, I'm afraid I'll have to take that one away and put it in the, can we put that one in the FAQs? Okay, and then the supplementary one from Ruth, well, there were two actually. The first one was asking whether the, the questions are scored, um, weighted differently, and I think we've had the answer to that um, with the table. And then can you confirm when grant payments would be made? Is it in advance or in arrears? It is in arrears. Okay, moving on then. Can we apply for funding for more than one project? So apply for two separate grants. I think the answer to that, Rochelle, is yes, you can put in two separate applications. Um, John Roberts, Helga referred to a worked example for Section 8 to the EOI form. Where can we find this example, please? Oh, um, I'm terribly sorry, that, that is in the guidance. Um, if you look in the guidance document on the web, that is um, um, there, that they've, they've drawn, um, it, it's um, displayed there. Where it originally comes from, um, I think, Claire, you know where it originally comes from. I think it might be helpful if we just send the link, uh, please. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, Lucy Taylor's asked, any ideas how projects might find 10% cash funding without it being match funding? Um, I think that, that is going to be quite a difficult um, issue for many small applicants. Yeah, um, I think if we look at it as unrestricted as clean, so if you've had money that you can use as your own funds, then that is eligible as part of the 10%. The most important thing to think about is if you've had money for building from a grant funder for build specifically for a purpose, for example, building a shed, then you cannot use that as match funding. But if you've had money, which is for all intents and purposes, is yours to use as you see fit, then that is eligible as part of the 10%. Okay. Um Shirley's added here, just clarifying the match funding issue. Match funding does not have to be in place before starting the project. However, if the project is started and the match funding does not materialise, then it is at the organisation's own risk. We do, however, state the match funding must be in place by the time the first claim is submitted. No payment will be made without match funding being in place. So I hope we find that helpful, um, just to supplement Haley's um, talk. Can I go to the phones then and ask whether anybody has any questions or observations that they'd like to make? Hello? Hello. Uh, sorry, I, I wasn't able to get in at the beginning of the call, um, so I, you may have answered this, but I wasn't clear what the range of size of bids you're speaking to. Um, the minimum size of bid that we're looking at, um, the total project cost, is 20,000. Um, so it's the 10,000 match funding, really. Um, that's the minimum. And um, 
the maximum, well, you know, we, we flagged the fact that, that the whole pot is three million, so, um, you know, it has to be proportionate, really. Um, obviously, if you come in and ask for 2.4, um, it means that there's very little for anybody else. So, you know, I think um, there's a range, isn't there? Uh, I know. Does that help? Well, it would make a difference, sorry, it would make a difference whether you were looking to fund 40 projects or 10. I mean, I, I think you may have, you may have a um, um, preference of whether you want to fund lots of very small, lots of £20,000 projects or, or a dozen more sizable ones. I, I think our view is that, you know, we probably want to fund a range um, so, you know, we will be open to see what comes in um, and, you know, which projects um, help address the challenges in an, you know, an innovative way. Okay, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Uh, Anybody else? Hello. Hello. Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Uh, it's Lisa Taylor from Federation of City Farms and Community Gardens. Um, just wondering um, what the offer date was, because we couldn't see it on slides. Um, and so, and everything needs to be finished, just confirming everything needs to be done by December 2019. Is that right? It, yes, that would be correct. Yes. Um, and what was the offer date after the full application? Uh, we anticipate it would be about uh, the 1st of June. That's what we're anticipating. So it was 18 months. Okay, thanks. Okay, anybody else with any questions? Just one thing, actually. Um, does the project have to start on the 1st of June? Oh, or, sorry, on the 16th of June. Could it could it have a delayed start? Uh, yes, it, yes, it could. But um, it was still, I think the timeline, it just means it would then be a shorter project. Thank you. Yeah, so there's no reason why it can't start a bit later, later as long as it ends, you know, so that the money can be claimed um, during the right period, really. Any further questions? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, I think I, I think my I think my question has uh, partly been answered. Um, but I just wondered about the size of the project. Would you consider a small project? I think. We've in the past we've we've kind of stuck to a minimum grant of ten thousand, um, which means that the project really needs to be up to twenty thousand in total cost. I don't know how you define a small project. Were you thinking of something smaller than twenty thousand? No, 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 no. We have a no. We have a, a project that's much larger than that. Okay. So hopefully, you know, we, you know, it'll fall into that criteria then, won't it? Okay. Thank you very much. It's okay. Any further questions or observations before we draw it to a close? Okay, can I thank you all for phoning in and attending this morning? I know it hasn't been ideal because of the fact that the webinar and the, the phone system didn't quite uh, work together um, with people dipping in and out. So I'm sorry about that. Um, can I also thank Helga and Haley for joining me this morning? And obviously the key things to note now are that um, the deadline for the project applications, EOIs coming in, is January the 
Help me again, Helga. Uh, it's January the 14th. 14th. Uh, yes, one midnight. minute to midnight, January the 14th. Midnight, January the 14th. If you've got any further general queries, can you send them to the funding application um, email address? There are key people in NRW that are dealing with the area's um, challenges, so please contact them direct um, on their emails, um, and hopefully you found it useful this morning. So can I thank you again for dialing in, and if you've got any further queries or want to make any observations, whether this was helpful or not, if you could just email them to the funding.applications at www.cymrocymru.gov.uk email address. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Ian. Has left the conference. Has left the conference. David Roberts. Has left the conference. Lynn Ball.